around those two issues. Mr. Chair, just a quick, uh, just a quick call. Just a couple of issues, Mr. Chair, that have arisen. Um, uh, Mayor Claire Curran, uh, Mayor, good grief. MP, uh, Member Claire Curran asked a question about the size of the SOP before. Uh, the SOP is basically the revision track bill. There's one or two kind of SOP type amendments in there, and one of them is the uh, point that the member raised um, around the uh, thresholds for large um, or not companies uh, that are overseas owned. Um, and operating here in, in New Zealand. So the size of the SOP has got no reflection on changes. In fact, there aren't too many changes as per the good work that the committee did. I do acknowledge the fine work and the cooperation and the acknowledgements from our speakers about uh, how we've got to this point and the very good ownership of the bill. Um, Mr Speaker, just one uh, point just through the, the charities as the members just asked the, about there before. Yes, um, I'm very aware of those issues and the committee also did good work. I think they, in fact, committee themselves raised the threshold from 40k to 125k for charities uh, reporting anyway. Actually, the professional organisations such as NZEK, CPA and organisations them themselves are undergoing quite a bit of educative um, uh, work out in the sector, in the voluntary sector, for public good and social good to ensure and just try to alleviate some of the concerns that the member did raise. Um, another point that did get, was raised um, just in general conversation um, in regard to charities, in fact, now the, the availability for organisations to have quite sophisticated um, structured accounting packages online, even though some of the members who have traditionally done some bookkeeping may not be all that comfortable um, working online with some of the cloud-type accounting packages, actually the ability for an organisation now to produce quite robust and fair um, and transparent accounts is uh, now much more apparent than it was. And I, but I do acknowledge the concerns. I have heard those. And I think the committee also um, did a good example of those. We have to contrast that, though, Mr Chair, with exactly what we have now. Because some not-for-profit organisations actually do have some quite substantial assets. And it is only fair for those members that raise funds or donate or give to them or work for them that actually we do improve the current situation, which is more like do-it-yourself bookkeeping. There is no checking, really, of some of the robustness or the integrity of the accounts as well in, as intended as many of them may be. And as the previous member noted, the committee spent a lot of time on this and they came to pretty good conclusions as now reflected in the bill, Mr Chair. The question is that the Minister's Amendments to Part 4 set out on SOP numbers 376 and 393 be agreed to. Those of that opinion will say aye. aye. Contrary, no. The ayes have it. The question now is that Part 4, as amended, stand part. Those of that opinion will say aye. aye. Contrary, no. The ayes have it. The question is that the Minister's amendments to Schedule 1 set out on SOP number 376 be agreed to. Those of that opinion will say aye. aye. Contrary, no. The ayes have it. The question now is that Schedule 1, as amended, stand part. Those of that opinion will say aye. aye. Contrary, no. The ayes have it. The question now is that the Minister's amendments to Schedule 2 set out on SOP number 376 be agreed to. Those of that opinion will say aye. aye. Contrary, no. The ayes have it. The question is that Schedule 2, as amended, stand part. Those of that opinion will say aye. aye. Contrary, no. The ayes have it. Uh, the new Schedule 3, so the question is that Minister's Amendment inserting new Schedule 3 set out on SOP number 376 be agreed to. Those of that opinion will say aye. aye. Contrary, no. The ayes have it. Come to clauses 1 and 2. The question is that... Uh, Dr. David Clark. Ah, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, 